There was a time when the name Steve Jobs simply meant adopted son of a mechanic. College dropout who had absolutely no clue what he wanted to do with his life. But eventually, when Steve got Jobs got that vision, got that dream, he pursued it relentlessly. And he persevered. And eventually, he created the Apple Corporation. But it wasn't all good yet. Because guess what? I don't have time to tell you the whole story of it today, but not long after he created his company, Steve Jobs was fired. Now, how do you get fired from a company that you created in the first place? But it happened. And as Steve Jobs himself said, he was out and in a very public way. Now again, he could have just given up. He could have just said, you know what? I need to calm down a little bit. I need to stop rocking the boat. Uh, you know, I, I, the world isn't ready or I'm not the right person to do it and I need to just give up, get a normal job, support a family and contribute to society like anybody else. Go back to college, you know, do whatever. But not Steve Jobs. He believed that he had a vision and a dream that was his and his alone that he needed to see through. Through a series of events, Steve Jobs created a new company, a small computer company called Next, and an animation studio called Pixar. We've heard of that, right? Cars, Finding Nemo, Toy Story. Eventually, through a series of events, Disney bought Pixar, and Apple bought Next, which put Steve Jobs back at the helm of his own company. But his troubles were far from over. He still had to turn a failing, dying company around into something successful. There were a lot of people who said he couldn't do it. A lot of people who believed the Macintosh was a thing of the past. Apple Computer was a thing of the past. And they probably thought Steve Jobs was crazy. And they probably went all George Lopez. Macintosh, the local Macintosh! He made a lot of decisions that angered a lot of people and frustrated a lot of people. But eventually, he was successful. And we know the rest of the story because we see the iPads, the iPhones. Steve Jobs was successful. He was someone that changed the world. What are the qualities that these people share, that they have in common, that makes them unique, that makes them different from other people? Because it occurs to me there's not a whole lot of people willing to change the world. If you look around at what people do and what they say, most people aren't interested in changing the world. They're only interested in surviving it for just another day, and they think that's good enough. Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. We've got serious problems in this world, and I believe we need serious people to solve them. So what are the qualities that make it possible? I'm going to tell you right now. Two things come to mind. First of all, a love for what you're doing. And secondly, an unrelenting sense of focus and determination. Let's talk about the love for what you're doing first, because that's an easy one. Every one of you is going to face the decision someday, what am I going to do after high school? College, career, technical school, what's it going to be? This is the advice that I can give to you right now. Find what it is that you love to do, and then figure out how to do it. It doesn't matter whether it's anybody else's dream, or anybody else's love. It doesn't matter whether people think you're crazy. It doesn't matter whether people think it's the wrong thing and that you should have a, a backup plan and that it's too risky. And all of these things, it makes no difference if it's really what you love. Because guess what? Your career is gonna take up a huge portion of your life. We've all gotta work. It might as well be on something we love. If it isn't, we're never gonna be truly happy. And we're never gonna be able to give it our all. But if we find the thing we love, we'll want to be successful. We'll want to make a difference. It may not be the same thing that anyone else loves. People may think it's crazy, it's risky, but find the thing that you love and then do it. And I'm not saying that sometimes we don't have jobs in between to hold us over. You know, we've all been there. But we've got to realize that's only temporary. That the thing we really love is the thing we really need to pursue. Now let's talk about that unrelenting sense of focus and determination. What is focus? I told you a few minutes ago that I am a huge uh, admirer of Steve Jobs, and he's one of my heroes, and 
I'm going to quote him several times during the next few minutes before we close here. And uh, one thing that Steve Jobs said about focus was that focus is about saying no. Now, what did he mean by that? Let me give you a very practical example. My wife and I, we work very differently. We'll be cleaning the house, and I'll work on one thing until it's done, and then I'll move on to the next thing. My wife, Jessica, she'll start on one thing, but then if she sees something else that catches her attention, she'll work on that thing, and then eventually she'll come back to the thing she started with. And she can juggle those things, and usually it works. 99% of the time, it works. But every once in a while, she may forget something. I've seen her actually have to heat and reheat a cup of water for tea six or seven times in the day before she finally remembers to drink it, because it's not where her focus is. And that's okay for a cup of tea but you're gonna face much bigger issues in life. And focus is about saying no to all of the negative voices that are gonna to try to drown out your inner voice. Focus is about saying no to all of the people who tell you it's not gonna work. Focus is about saying no to the failures, and yes, to the possibility of success. And that is the determination. It's the drive, it's the compassion, it's the passion for what you're doing, it's the commitment, it's the dedication. It's having the courage to stand up and make a difference. A lot of people are talking about change, but they're not standing up to do anything about it. What do they do? They want to blame it on everybody else. They want to make you afraid of it and tell you who's to blame for it. Well, you know, they'll say, it's because the problems in the world are because of this or that. You know, they're because of violence in video games, or because of the bars, or because of the church, or because of the president, you know? If you ask a Democrat, everything is the Republican's fault. If you ask a Republican, everything is the Democrat's fault. They waste so much time arguing, they can't get anything done. We need to stop blaming other people, and we need to stand up and say, I am going to be the one to make a difference. It doesn't matter what anybody else does, I am going to change the world. It's going to be my voice that starts a change in this world. That's when real change happens. It happens when people like you and me finally realize that enough is enough and we say, I can make a difference. It happens when people like you and me finally realize that change does not happen from the top down. It happens from the bottom up. It happens when people like you and me finally get the message that everything about this world that you call normal, that you call the establishment, has been created by people who are no smarter than you, who are no more resourceful, who are no more powerful. The only difference was they chose to have the courage to stand up and do it. Was it easy? Will it be easy for you? I'd be lying if I said it was easy. No, it's gonna be hard. You're gonna have failures, you're going to make mistakes. People are going to call you crazy. Because anytime you're trying to affect change, people get uneasy. They don't like it. They're afraid of it. And they want to make you afraid of it. And you're going to tick people off. But I honestly believe if you don't tick people off in your, in your lifetime, then you're not effective at what you're doing. People are going to get uneasy. You will make mistakes. But at least you'll be making some decisions. At least you'll be doing it. There's no reason that it can't be you. You know, I stood up here today and I told you the story of Steve Jobs and Walt Disney and said, they're two of my heroes. Someday, it could be your name. Someone could be standing up on this very stage and saying, Madison Miller has changed the world. <laughs> Cole Funk is my hero. <laughs> Kelsey Miley has changed the world. It could be your name. Why not you? You don't come from a wealthy background, neither did a lot of those people. You don't get good grades in school all the time, neither did a lot of those people. You don't think everyone likes you? Guess what, join the club. The greatness doesn't come from what you have already been given, it comes from what you choose to do, how you choose to go about it, making the decision not to take no for an answer. You're going to have failures. I've said that already, but I'm saying it again. You're going to have failures. It doesn't always work on the first try. It doesn't always work on the second try. For some people, it doesn't even work on the tenth try. 
You're going to be called crazy. I thought I was going to be called crazy once. Actually, I get called crazy a lot. I started a, our church. I told you I'm a pastor. And one of the things I wanted to do in our church was to start a singing competition that's very similar to American Idol. And we called the singing competition Rising Star. And I went to our church board with a proposal to do this singing competition. I told them we'd need to spend $6,000 just to get the competition up and running. We needed a place to have it. We needed good sound equipment. We needed prizes that people would actually want to win. And I figured out it would take $6,000 to do the first year. And I was confident that the dots would connect eventually and that it would all work out. Because having that confidence is the only thing that's going to make it work for you. No one else's blessing, no one else's agreement with you is going to do it. I was confident that it would work out. I was not confident that our board would see it my way. Because our church was only three months old. And let me tell you, we did not have $6,000 in our bank account. I thought the board was going to flat turn me down, was going to reject me, was going to say, you are crazy. $6,000, done for $6,000. But I went to the board and I said, look, this is a vision that I have. This is a dream that I've been given, and I think it deserves a chance. And I'm asking for your support, not your support of me, but your support of the dream, of the idea, and of the lives that it may change. Do you know it was approved unanimously? Every one of our board members went for it. And you ask, well, how did it do? Well, let me tell you, we are now going to enter into the seventh year of doing Rising Star. Now, we've had some ups and some downs. It's not always been easy. Fortunately, we've had more ups than downs. But we've never abandoned the dream because we believe it deserves a chance. Before I close, I want to share with you a quick video. I told you before that this is going to be the last time you'll hear me refer to Apple or Steve Jobs today. But this was a, a commercial for Apple that was done several years ago. And I really want you to listen to the words of this commercial because it talks about people who were crazy enough to believe they could change the world. Here's to the crazy ones. The misfits. The rebels. The troublemakers. The round pegs and the square holes. The ones who see things. They're not popular. No respect for the status quo. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. Now, the only thing you can't do is ignore them. Because they change things. They push the race forward. And while some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius. <laughs> a lot of bells in this place, you know that? Now listen to me for one more second. When you try to affect change, when you try to make a difference in the world and change the world, you are going to run up against obstacles. I can't say that enough. And people will give you thousands, maybe even millions of reasons why you should not do what it is that you're trying to do. And some of those reasons might even be good. And some of those reasons might be things you never thought of before. But I'm going to give you just one reason why you should pursue your dreams. Because sometimes it works. Because sometimes it all works out, it goes right, and those are the times when the world is made a better place. Our life on this earth is limited, but we want to make a difference for ourselves, for others, and for our future. Your dreams could be just one try away. Keep dreaming, keep believing, and start doing. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.